Hi everyone, it is a windy Tuesday here at Denver Zoo. This is Zoo to You Virtual Safari. Today we are standing outside of Monkey Island with Keeper Abby to talk about our resident capuchin. So this is a really fun habitat for people to come by and see. So I'm sure you're familiar with this habitat, Monkey Island, if you've been to Denver Zoo before. So we can't wait to talk more about our lovely capuchins, their personalities, their social dynamics. It's a tad windy here in Denver today. So we're gonna do everything we can to make sure you can hear and can hear clearly. We'll repeat ourselves, we're, we'll speak loudly, we'll do everything we can, um, but just be patient with us if you can. We can't control the wind and we really want to be outside to show you the capuchins today. So we appreciate you guys helping us out with that patience and we'll be answering your questions in the comment replies as well if you can't hear. So let's get started. We have Keeper Abby. Hey Abby. Hey. And tell us about our little group. What do you call a group of capuchins, first of all? Um, you can call it a group or a troop. Um, we have 13 capuchins here at Denver Zoo. We have one of, the, one of the largest groups of capuchins anywhere in North America. Um, and like I said, we have 13, uh, 12 females and one male. Um, and I'm going to throw a couple ice treats out to them right now. This is just coconut water, um, a little treat for them. And we'll see a couple of them come down and get it. Um, capuchins have a pretty um, big hierarchy, which means some animals are more dominant than others. So you'll see only a couple of them will get it. Not all 13 will come down and get it. Someone's got two. Yeah. <laughs> and now a third. Three. Um, there's Lynn getting one. And then Bailey hopefully will get one here. She is our most dominant. She's the oldest capuchin we have. She's 38 and she's actually the oldest primate here at Denver Zoo. Zoe has a great question. She's in Denver. Hi, Zoe. She wants to know if they like water. So this is a really great opportunity to talk about the design of Monkey Island and why um, just this moat is going to keep them safely on that island. Yeah, so they um, certainly drink water and they'll play in water a little bit. They like um, inside if I turn on a little sprinkler, they each have their own little lixits, which is like a little faucet that they can turn on and off to get water and they'll play in that water. But deep water is not something they like. They do not have the ability to swim um, just because they're so muscular. They just sink. Um, they can't swim at all. So the water is actually what keeps them out here on Monkey Island. Um, and the way that they get out to the island is actually a tunnel that goes underground. Um, it comes up at this rock work that we're looking at here and it goes from the exhibit on the other side. So I'll show everyone right there in the center of your screen. That's actually the entrance tunnel and if you're here around what like 3 30 in the afternoon? Yeah you generally between three and four is when we start um, taking them off the island. You'll hear a keeper like Abby or one of her co-workers kind of calling them in and they'll go in that tunnel under here back into Monkey Island which is one of our older habitats here. Yeah at Denver Zoo. Lisa's wondering, she wants to put you on the spot, uh, what their names are. We have 13, yeah. so, so give us a second. It's Bailey, Lynn, Susan, Joni, Mitzi, Carrie, Ginger, Katie, Dee Dee, Cleo, Zelda, Kuzco, and Drew. <laughs> All right, so I'm not gonna make her repeat those again, but we have 13 and they have pretty um, like human they names. have very human names, um, but it's pretty cute. It's actually kind of fun every afternoon when we're calling them in and I'm out here, you know, saying, Susan, come inside. But they all do know their names. These guys are the most intelligent species of monkey um, in the world. So they're on par with um, cetaceans like dolphins and whales and great apes. So super, super intelligent. I want to say hi to Dayette and Halima. I hope I pronounced that right. Thank you for joining us and watching. Um, hi, Nick. And I hope that answered your question, Lisa. Uh, Lori is wondering what their lifespan is. Um, so here in zoo settings, they can live sometimes into their late 40s and early 50s. So while Bailey is 38 um, and that's pretty old, she um, could live a lot longer than that. Our youngest capuchin that we have is 19. Um, so we do have quite a, a range of ages amongst our group here. Yeah, we have a 19 year span between our youngest and our oldest. So we have no babies here. No little baby capuchins. No, yeah, no babies. Um, but these guys do get uh, called babies a lot because of their small size. They only weigh six and a half to seven pounds. Um, but 
they are very strong um, for their size. Let's take a walk around okay. to see if we can get a better view of some of them. Um, a great way to look, great place to look if you're ever at Denver Zoo at Monkey Island, you can't see them, is ups. Lisa wanted to know if they climb. They're excellent climbers, yeah. aren't they? So these are an arboreal species of monkey. So they spend most of their time in the trees, but you'll often see our more dominant ones um, hanging out lower on the rock work. You can see them enjoying that coconut water right now. Um, but mostly I say to look up. Um, we have these trees that have been here for a very long time on um, this exhibit. Um, was built in the 1930s so it, it has huge trees that let the monkeys just you know be monkeys all day which is pretty cool so we can see some in trees a yeah further over and if we look all the way up over there we can see one yeah somebody's way up high right now you can kind of see them moving I would zoom in but it would pretty much reduce the quality so there'd be no point so I won't hi Zoe so monkey island is right past the pachyderm building across from the carousel on your way to Primate Panorama. So when you come into the zoo and you head right, if you just stay straight on the path and don't venture off, you will find yourself at Monkey Island. And she wants to know if zookeepers ever throw food in the water. We don't throw food in the water. Um, they would not be able to get it because they can't go in the water. They just can't swim. Um, and we wouldn't want to entice them into the water either and make it dangerous for them. Uh, hi Whitney, we have 12 females and one male. So almost all female, but we have one guy in there. Um, Lori's wondering how much they weigh. So six and a half to seven pounds on average for our group. Um, oh, here's a very common question. Sienna is six. She wants to know what they eat. So these guys are opportunistic eaters, which means they'll kind of eat anything. Um, omnivores, so uh, in the wild, they'd be finding um, different fruits and tubers, which are like roots from the ground, insects, small birds and lizards, um, kind of anything that's available. Uh, and here we feed them a lot of veggies, lots of greens. Romaine is one of their favorite foods. They get insects every day, sometimes hard boiled eggs. Um, we don't do any fruits. The fruit that we get in grocery stores here in the U.S. is much higher in sugar than the fruit that they would be finding in their natural environment. So because of that higher sugar, we don't do a lot of fruit. Uh, Tennifer is wondering why we only have one male. Um, so a normal capuchin group would be a dominant male um, and uh, some breeding females and their offspring and maybe a couple younger males. Our dominant male um, who's the dad of pretty much everyone here, passed from old age a couple years ago. And since these girls have lived together for their entire lives, they do just fine without a dominant male. In fact, Bailey, our dominant female, um, kind of fills that role. So Cusco, who's our one boy, um, just kind of acts like one of the younger boys and fits right in with his sisters. Um, Ethan's wondering how long are their tails and are they prehensile? Uh, I would say that their tails are a little over a foot long. I've never actually measured one. Um, and they are prehensile. That's something that's really cool about New World primates or Central and South American primates. They're the ones with the prehensile tails. So you'll see um, them wrap it around branches and kind of use it to balance and hold on to things. Capuchins don't have a fully prehensile tail. Uh, the monkeys with fully prehensile are spider monkeys and howler monkeys, which means that they can completely hang and suspend from that tail. So that's like the ones behind us. Yeah, the spider monkeys have the full prehensile tail. <laughs> Hi, Dominic. I got the friend's reference. He wanted to know if we have a, a capuchin named Marcel. We do not have a capuchin named Marcel. <laughs> no, Marcel. Um, can you talk about the social dynamics? We're getting a lot of questions about is there a social hierarchy? Um, you mentioned we have a dominant yes. one, Bailey. Yes, yeah, so there is a huge social hierarchy. Um, we have what we call our most dominant group. So that's Bailey and her daughters. Um, they kind of run the show. And then we have all the subordinates below them. And there is, um, it's pretty common to hear, you know, some crying or some um, types of screaming. And that's just them uh, finding out that hierarchy and testing it throughout the day. So you'll see maybe a monkey will try and steal food from someone else and that can sometimes result in 
um, monkeys yelling or a little tiny fight, but that's totally normal. Um, what we do is every afternoon when they all come off the island, they get to uh, sleep in our old monks building um, in nine different rooms where they break up into their small family groups um, and only sleep and eat with their um, re closest relatives, the monkeys that they get along the best with. And that makes sure that, you know, the monkeys that aren't so dominant get all the food that they need and the attention and um, kind of a peace of mind away from the more dominant monkeys every day. Uh, Lala is nine. Hello, great to see you on here today, Lala. She wants to know if they groom each other like other monkeys and apes do. They do. They spend a lot of time grooming and that's actually one of the ways that they bond with one another and um, help maintain those um, social orders. So you'll see them kind of grooming with each other throughout the day, especially in the sun in the afternoon. I'm kind of trying to track a couple of fast yeah, groomers up there. Yeah, definitely lots in the trees right now. Yes, they're really enjoying it. It's I, I've been walking by Monkey Island a lot while the zoo has been closed, and this is the greenest it's looked yeah, so in a while. It's our, finally yeah, starting to look a little nice are again. Finally budding out. Our cottonwoods will hopefully be uh, fully leaved out in the next couple weeks here. But the capuchins really enjoy actually eating the sappy buds as the trees um, go through their normal springtime bloom. Are they likely to try to jump from that high height off the island? They cannot jump that far, um, so they know that would be dangerous. That's a pretty far fall. Some of these trees are um, probably close to 80 feet. Um, so they're really good at knowing their own limits. You'll even see them kind of test branches. They'll get out on branches. You can see some of them up high right now. On branches that are only about an inch in diameter, they're really good climbers and so, so they know what's safe. Um, they know what can hold them and they know what types of jumps they can do. Uh, Luke and Ethan, hello. They're wondering what they are most closely related to. Um, it'd be other South American and Central American primates. So there are 22 species of capuchins. This is just one of them. Um, but uh, spider monkeys, squirrel monkeys, and the other seabids, as they're called, um, would be the their closest relatives. Um, so someone's asking if we keep them out here all year long, but they're not really cold weather fans, are they? No. So we only use our island when it's going to be 35 degrees overnight or warmer. Um, and they, so we don't want the water to freeze and that's why. So we usually start letting them out here in March and then they'll stay out sometimes into October, depending on the weather. Um, they do come off the island every night again, though, because they want to sleep in those family groups and um, eat, eat with their um, family group. Um, and then every morning we let them back out using that tunnel. Boy, so it's a really fun thing to watch them get called in. Someone like Abby will call them in by name. Who is usually the first to come in and who's the last? Um, generally, Bailey's group, the most dominant group, is the first monkeys off the island and last is pretty much always Carrie. She is um, one of the least dominant monkeys and she sleeps in a room that's kind of right as you come inside so she likes to wait until all the other monkeys are out of the way so she can come inside and just go straight to her spot. A uh, quick just note sorry about the wind everyone we can't control it but we're trying to make sure you can hear our answers. Yeah let's keep kind of wandering around to get another view. Um, a big common question we get, especially with primates, is Abby, how do you tell them all apart? Uh, so with capuchins especially, they do look really similar. They're all about the same size, um, but you'll notice that they all kind of have slightly different hair on top of their head in like two um, sort of clumps. We can maybe kind of see it on Carrie on the ground here, but so the older females get those tufts and those all look different on everyone. Um, and some of the younger ones don't have tufts at all, so that's a way I tell them apart. Some of them just happen to have like little blonde patches in places. Um, that's Cleo way up high in the tree here. Cusco, who's our only boy, is a little lower. He's slightly bigger. Um, Zelda is over that way. I notice her because she has really blonde patches on the side of her head. So really the answer is 
if you're just a casual visitor of Denver Zoo, it's going to be very hard to tell them apart. Uh, the more time you spend with them, caring for them the way our keepers do, it becomes a lot easier to tell them apart. But it's little things like tufts of hair, different colored patches, facial features. Um, it just really takes some time to to learn. Uh, hi, Jean. She is from Florida. She's watching daily, but she is a native Denverite. Um, Zoe is wondering, do they go to the bathroom in the pool or on the island? Room wherever they really, it's probably out on the island. Um, capuchins do do an interesting thing. It actually means that they pee into their own hands and feet and then rub it all over their bodies. Um, and this has a lot of different benefits. Um, it uh, reduces stress. So capuchins that urine wash more frequently have been found to have lower amounts of the stress hormone cortisol. Uh, it, al it also spreads their smell all over the, um, their territory. And it's actually hygienic, as crazy as it sounds. It does keep their fur clean and fluffy. So um, oftentimes you'll see them, you might see them, urine wash. Urine washing. Yeah. Um, April just tuned in. She's wondering what types of enrichment we give them. Uh, we give them all sorts of things. Um, again, because these guys are the most intelligent species of monkey, uh, they can do really complicated puzzles. These guys have been um, seen using tools um, out in the wild. So we give them lots of different things to try and open or to get food out of, lots of um, things to bang. That's a pretty normal capuchin behavior is to hit things against other things to get them open. Um, lots of different things to forage with. Uh, we're really lucky with them because the sky's kind of the limit with enrichment because of how smart they are. Uh, Ryan and Betty both have really great questions about kind of the husbandry behaviors. Are they uh, target trained for physical checks? Um, what kind of training do we do with them to help them with their medical care? So we do a lot of training with them. Each monkey is trained every single day. Uh, so we have them present different parts of their bodies. Um, we have them give us their hips so that we can give them voluntary vaccinations. All of them get vaccinations every single year. We have them um, put their hands in our hands so we can check their fingers. Um, because of their dominance, sometimes um, in fights, fingers are the first thing to get injured. So we check everyone's fingers every day. Um, and then lots of things to just uh, be able to check all over, um, get weights on them, anything to kind of take better care of them. So uh, Leo recently lost his first two teeth and he's wondering if monkeys lose their teeth. Yes, yeah, so as they um, grow up, just like we do, uh, they lose their baby teeth and they get a full set of adult teeth. How long does that take? When do they start losing them and when do the adult teeth come in? These guys are generally full grown at about a year and a half. So I think probably um, it all happens during that time, but I've never actually <laughs> seen questions about what are uh, capuchins predators in their natural habitat? Um, so it'd be uh, large birds of prey mostly. So um, harpy eagles and other birds of prey. Um, perhaps jaguars um, in some of the areas. Um, the really thing that affects them the most is habitat fragmentation um, and habitat loss due to um, agriculture. Uh, so that's something that um, mostly affects, you know, their survival in the wild. That in the pet trade, because of these guys' small stature and their um, intelligence, they are often um, taken from the wild to be kept as pets. But if you just heard me talk about urine washing, that should be, you know, the number one reason why you wouldn't want one of these in your house. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> urine washing doesn't sound like something uh, anyone wants to watch in their house. Katie Chopper, she's wondering, could they do or learn sign language? Um, yes, I think they could. So a lot of the ways that we train them are using hand signals from us. Um, it's not necessarily American sign language, but I'll give them a sign with my hand and they'll do the behavior um, that that hand sign correlates with. So I think sign language is something that they could certainly understand. I don't think that they would necessarily sign back though. 
Nancy's wondering how well they handle the rain in the summer. You know, we get those thunderstorms in the middle of the afternoon here sometimes. What's their reaction? Well, these guys are found in the rainforest, uh, but they don't love rain. So <laughs> oftentimes when it rains, you'll see them get under branches, maybe under the platform. They also always have access to the tunnel that goes underground. So when it rains, lots of them will go into the tunnel and wait for the rainstorm to pass. Victoria's wondering if they have a favorite type of tree that they like to climb on. Favorite type of tree. Um, I think, you know, they definitely all have little favorite nooks in trees that they like to sleep in or that are comfy. Um, but these cottonwoods, the bark on them is kind of pretty perfect for climbing. So it's got really thick bark um, and they have very tiny hands, but they're one of the most dexterous hands of any monkey, um, which means they can just hold on and do really small movements with them. So they can kind of climb anything. We've seen them sometimes go bipedal on the rope. To, can they stay that way long on those back two legs? Yeah, so they can walk bipedally on the ground really easily. Oftentimes in the morning when I've put their romaine lettuce out here for the day, you'll see them get armfuls of it and walk on two feet all the way to wherever they want to take their lettuce and set it back down. Can you mention, normally in the summer, I think a lot of people also see that we have pelicans in the water. Yes. Um, can you talk about why they're not here? Yeah, so our pelicans um, that are normally, have normally been out here for years, um, moved to be a part of a larger pelican flock um, at the Tracy Aviary in Utah where they're out on um, an open creek um, and part of a larger group of pelicans. And that happened just as part of the change with Bird World um, and the closure of Bird World here at the zoo. So you won't be seeing the pelicans here this summer, but that was also part of your job was to feed them, wasn't it? Yeah, so the pelicans, yep, would get hand fed twice a day, um, swallowing that fish hole. Um, they're definitely missed by their keepers, um, but we've gotten some updates from Tracy Air Aviary and um, Chance is doing great out there. Oh, well, that's so great to hear. What is your favorite part about working with capuchins? I mean, everything's kind of my favorite with working with capuchins. They are um, just one of the most uh, fun animals to work with because of how busy they are, how intelligent they are. I think that they, you know, kind of are my spirit animal a little bit. Um, just, uh, they're kind of funny and hilarious and they each have their own personalities and it's really nice to be able to get to know those personalities and build a relationship with each individual so that we can trust each other and work together. Um, yeah, I just love them. I can vouch if there was an animal that I would say was very much like Abby, our, our funniest uh, keeper, it would definitely be these capuchins. They have so much personality and so does Abby. So I think it's a great fit that she takes care of these guys. <laughs> oh my gosh. Um, do you think they have a favorite keeper? Oh, well, <laughs> um, no, I think that they probably are pretty excited of, with anyone that gives them attention. You know, if I had to say, I would hope it's me, but um, my closest coworker, Kristen, they have really bonded with her. Um, shout out to Kristen. But yeah, they are um, kind of into anyone who's, you know, willing to give them a treat or two. Yeah, so Dayette says, do they like human interaction? Is it hard for keepers to work with them or are they really uh, good with you all? Um, they like human interaction in the fact that they often get um, rewards for human interaction because a lot of our human interaction comes with, you know, training um, or me bringing them in at the end of the day and then getting um, food. There are some that are far more people oriented than others. Uh, Katie, who is definitely a fan favorite of the Capuchins, I can see her peering through some bushes in the back over there. Um, she is the most people oriented. Um, she'll definitely um, find guests and flirt with them and make faces at them and just kind of be busy all day. You can generally see Katie on the ground close to the water. That's kind of her preference. She likes hanging out and playing in the water. We have an excellent post from a few days ago. You can see it on Instagram or Facebook of us trying to get a good picture of yep. Katie. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of parents would relate to, you know, you just want your kid to smile and instead you get um, the face Katie made. Yeah, <laughs> yep. and that face is, um, 
an excited face and also a face of um, them kind of flirting. They raise their eyebrows and cross their arms and sing when they um, are cycling and that's how they attract a mate. So maybe some of you want to try that at home. <laughs> Mackenzie is seven and she wants to know what the capuchin's favorite activity is. Favorite activity? Um, probably foraging for bugs um, and sunflower seeds. Um, they also just really like banging things. So they'll pick up pretty much anything we give them and hit it into walls or shelves or rocks. So if you can imagine 13 capuchins all holding their own coconut and slamming it into the ground, um, it can be pretty loud, but they definitely like breaking open things. So. Another reason they're not good yeah. pets. They also, their favorite, favorite thing probably is whole onions. Um, they, in addition to urine washing, set wash with anything that's strong smelling. So if we give them a whole onion, they'll bang it until they get that onion open, they'll peel it apart, and they'll rub it all over their bodies until they completely smell like onions. I um, mean, that's a way that they bond with each other. Um, and it's also a natural insect repellent. Who is this brave capuchin on the shore? That's Kuzco. He's the only boy. I think he's down here looking for, um, maybe some seeds or things that have fallen out of the trees that he can easily get as they build up kind of along the edge of the water. Oh yeah, there he is. He's really exploring there. I've seen sometimes they kind of like dip their hand in it just to yeah. see. Yeah, so they'll come down and sometimes get stuff from the edge of the water as it pools. Um, sometimes they'll dip certain things in the water. Uh, they'll drink out of it. Um, Dee Dee, one of the capuchins, she doesn't like to drink directly from the water. So what she'll do is dip her tail in the water and then drink the water off of her tail. <laughs> to each their own. To, yeah, so they're, like they said, we're, they're very individual yeah. here. That's Dee Dee there sitting kind of in those bushes. So hopefully you all can see Dee Dee. Hi Kate, yes, the moat is very, well, the wind has blown a lot of it over here. Yeah, there's a lot more leaves on this side from the wind. We do our best, but we can't control the wind, unfortunately. Oh, they're having such a good time. Are they big nappers? Do they sleep a lot during the day? They take small naps during the day and they'll kind of doze as they groom each other. Um, but they sleep from 7 p.m. till 7 a.m. So we have their light cycle inside their building set to be um, to follow their kind of natural habitat where the, the sun would kind of be up for about 12 hours. So they get a long sleep at nighttime. I'm a little jealous sometimes. <laughs> yes, they get a lot of sleep. So they're one of the more active ones. So I know a lot of times, a lot of our animals are napping during the day mm -hmm. when people come visit, but pretty much if you come by Monkey Island, you're guaranteed to see yes. some um, yeah, awake some of them capuchins. Awake, for sure, yeah. And if you can come by and find all 13 of them, I don't, we should probably give out gold stars. <laughs> yes, if you can take a picture with all 13, yeah. <laughs> or at least identify all 13, or list off all their names, we'll give you a prize. <laughs> um, so I'll take a couple more questions, just waiting for them to trickle in. Um, I will say if you missed it, we had some really big news we announced today. Uh, we welcomed two new lion cubs, all the information on our cubs and our new arrivals on our Facebook page and on our website. So I hope you all check that out. But we are watching the Capuchins right now on Monkey Island, Shannon says. Denver Zoo is her favorite zoo. Thank you so much, Shannon. Um, oh, Kate says, this is not a Capuchin question, but is Bungie still here? Bungie is still here. He's actually right behind us, um, sunning himself. Where's Bungie? Uh, he's up in the oh. uh, corner of that exhibit right there. So yep. there's Bungie for you, Kate. Yep, he's 22, which is a, about middle age for them. And he is doing great. Whew, the wind is really picking up. Who is our other spider monkey up there? That's Mia on the left side there, kind of half hanging on the mat and half sitting on a pipe. She's found an interesting <laughs> way to sit, but you can see they're both kind of hanging from that prehensile tail right now. So they can hang fully upside down with their tail. Yep, so they can put that whole body weight on the tail. And what's really cool about a fully prehensile tail is while they can hang their full body weight and then some on it, they can also pick up something as small as a pea with the tip of their tail. So um, each spider monkey has a little 
um, hairless spot on their tail and it has a fingerprint just like our fingers have fingerprints and they're unique to every single spider monkey so it's pretty cool. Wow that is very cool. Uh, Kate says she was a KA, a keeper's assistant in Emerald Forest and he was a favorite of hers. Oh good, he's a favorite of mine. So we're so excited. Oh hi Shannon, she says Bodie the Elephant is her favorite. Well the wind is picking up pretty big here. I see they're still enjoying what's left of the coconut water on yep. those uh, yeah. little Dixie cups. <laughs> they're really trying to get every little last bit. Uh, Christopher is wondering, are capuchins afraid of anything? They are, um, so they would be afraid of their, um, you know, their natural predators like jaguars and um, birds of prey. Here though, these capuchins, um, the thing that they're the most afraid of are slugs, as crazy as that sounds. And I'm not sure why or how it all started, but whenever these guys spot a slug, they all alarm call. Um, it, which sounds like a bit like a chirpy scream and um, Bailey who's the alpha has to go over and swat the slug out of the way which you know takes a lot of courage it's pretty scary you know there. them and me both I'm not a fan of slugs yeah, either they're slimy and gross I'm gonna I'm gonna yelp if I see one as well so um, Shannon if you're interested in volunteering you can go to our website and learn more information um, no Katie we said a slug that's what they're afraid of not sloths <laughs> so uh, yeah she, Nancy says sounds like the ew response we'll yeah, kind of keep exactly. watching to see if we can get oh who's that is that this Cusco, is Cusco. Oh, again, yep. What kind of vocalizations do they make? Before we kind of sign off, I think we haven't talked about the, the noises they make. They make all sorts of vocalizations. They definitely make um, the sound that is kind of identified with monkeys worldwide. So you'll often hear them say hoot, 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 which is um, their happy sound. They make that whenever they're happy or excited about something. They also do a, some chirps and screams and grunts and they all kind of mean a little something different. Do they kind of make those very typical monkey sounds that we think of when we think of monkeys? Yeah exactly so the really typical sounds definitely come from capuchins so little tiny hoots, um, chirps and they kind of string them together and that's kind of whenever you hear a little kid make a monkey sound it's pretty similar to the sound Hi, Kala and Chase. We are wrapping up, so if you just signed on, uh, so we're sorry to say you missed maybe the first part of this, but you can always go to our YouTube page. You can search Denver Zoo in YouTube and subscribe and follow us, and you can watch the whole video from the beginning. Uh, we really cannot wait to reopen and get you all here, but in the meantime, we're really happy to host these virtual safaris and help you all learn a little bit more about a new species every day. Um, I've learned so much about capuchins today between urine washing and their fear of slugs. Uh, I feel a little bit smarter today. So thank you so much, Abby. Yeah, thank <laughs> And you. thank you to everyone who's donated and watched and filled out our survey. We really, really appreciate it. Um, we can't wait to give you more updates on all of our animals, including our new cubs, as Stephanie says, yay, Abby and Bungie. <laughs> so thank you all for watching and we'll be back tomorrow.